So you're moving to Seattle. Well, I've got a whole list of things that are absolutely going to shock you. But the number one thing I learned is this, your happy bill. That's right, we're gonna talk about these guys, the weather and everything else coming up that you need to know about moving to Washington if you're not from here. We're gonna talk about the weather, cost of living, way people operate a little bit differently here in the state of Washington and everything else that you would need to know about before you moved out here to Seattle. And we're getting after it right now. Hey, Chris, myself and our team, we are getting phone calls, texts, emails every single day for people just like you looking to make their move out to the greater Seattle area and we absolutely love it. So whether you're looking at making your move in the next three days or the next three months, shoot us a phone call, text, or an email so we can help you make that smooth move. All right, well, you might be wondering why I've got my happy hello vitamins here, my vitamin D. Well, Washington, unlike a lot of other states, has a severe lack of sunlight in the fall and the winter. Actually, right now we're in a time called the big dark. See, once daylight savings time changes over, that's it, friends. Yeah, it gets sunlight at about eight o'clock and then it goes dark at about 4.15. So if you're working a normal nine to five job, you could very easily wake up and have no sunlight, get off work, and again, be right back to the dark. I always said living in Missouri when daylight savings time rolled around, it was like, do you want another hour of sleep? And daylight savings time here in Washington is more like, wouldn't it be fun if it got dark at lunch? <laughs> now the darkness out here does not run as long as it does in Alaska. In fact, typically going from November through about Christmas is the worst of it. And you start to see daylight increase over the upcoming months to the point where once summer hits, it's sun up at about 5.30 and at 10 o'clock, you can really still be outside walking around the neighborhood with the sun barely going down and the most gorgeous purple, pink, and yellow skies that you'll ever see as you sashay your way down your neighborhood streets. All right, the second thing on my list is got to be the way service is conducted out here in Washington. Now, so the girl at Anthem just gave me this refresher reviver thing. It basically tastes like poison. Now, this might not be the same for some of you coming from like the far East Coast, but as a Midwest boy where we were Midwest nice and everyone was always as polite as they possibly could be because socially it was just considered unfavorable to not be super polite there. People here, especially in the service industries, they don't really seem like they give a damn. Now here's what I mean. I don't know if these people were raised that it was rude to interject and come forward and ask if you need help, but even the other day, I was taking my kid's car to get tires changed on it at the local tire shop. And I walked in and the two service guys are just standing there. Yeah, there's some customers coming in and out, but they're overall just kind of staring at me. No one ends up saying anything for quite a while. I end up walking over to the girl at the checkout line, asking her if that's who helps me. And she says, have these guys not reached out to you? <laughs> no, they hadn't. And in fact, they seemed kind of shocked that after 10 minutes, I actually came up to them and asked if they could help me out. I kind of noticed the same thing with hosts and servers here as well. In the Midwest, you'd always be hustling, you never leave a drink empty. And even if something wasn't someone's table, they would come by and refill your soda or your water cup. Here, there's definitely a, that's not my job mentality. And I kind of feel like only your server is the one that's going to be helping you. So in order to adjust to that, just be comfortable speaking up when you need something. Go ahead and tell people, hey man, can you help me out? Hey ma'am, could you grab me another Diet Coke. Whatever it is, the service is just not going to be as fast and as forward as what you're probably used to. So you're gonna to have to take the initiative and ask for the things you want. This is a minor inconvenience, but it is definitely culturally quite a bit different.
Another thing that's probably going to shock you if you're not already from the West Coast is gonna be the cost of living. Now this skyrockets, sitting 50% above the national average and the worst of it being housing, sitting at about 115% of the national average of housing. In fact, right now, at this time in 2023, a pretty standard three bedroom, two bathroom house in Seattle is going to run you about $965,000 with certain neighborhoods cresting over $1.5 million for a house. As someone that came from an area where the average house was 160 to $180,000, looking 10 times that was quite a shock and something I was not prepared for as someone who's not a resident of Washington for their entire life. Now, cost of living does come into play in a couple places where I really do feel like groceries are not nearly as expensive. In fact, they're about the same as what I paid in Missouri and what you'll pay throughout the South and the Midwest. Same really goes for utilities. Utility costs are quite a bit lower. And I was super shocked by this. You know, we could easily, if you're from uh, Missouri, Kansas, Oklahoma, Texas, especially in those summer months, you could rack up a $600 electric bill. But with our more temperate climate kind of sitting in that 50 to 75 degree weather range, your utility costs aren't super high. You're not ever really using a lot of heating and a lot of cooling for your property. We have a gas fireplace downstairs, and for the most part in the winter, that is all we need. If we turn it on, it will pretty much heat our house to set us up for most days in the winter. And listen, while utilities aren't super expensive, there is something that happens to you that you might not be ready for when you move here. You get super accustomed to that mild climate that I was telling you about. Uh, in fact, my youngest Finley, if it's pretty much below 60, he's freezing and if it's above 75 the guy feels like it's a sauna outside it's the most hilarious thing ever on a positive note not paying income tax is super nice living in missouri i was always accustomed to the state getting their fair share of taxes in fact even when i was younger and we didn't make a lot of money we might not owe any federal income tax but dang it the state got it now while there are only a few states in the United States that offer a no state income tax. I will tell you that Washington, while that extra money is nice to have in your pocket, get ready, they are gonna find a way to get it back from you. And that it comes in the way of sales tax, sitting at around 10.3%. They're definitely gonna find a way to get their money back from you. So the offset is if you have a very, very well-paying job, you're gonna do much better not having that state income tax and paying the state taxes on the stuff that you would purchase but overall it'd be nice if you could just kind of get you know one or the other and really feel like you're winning Washington is a very active state. In fact, Seattle is known and ranked as one of the healthiest large cities and places like Bellevue are ranked as some of the healthiest medium-sized cities. First of all, there are perfect summers out here, not like those Midwest and South summers that are 115 degrees and they're so humid that you're basically just melting, but typically somewhere between about 70 and 80 degrees. On top of that, we have all kinds of water between lakes and the sound, rivers and creeks. We have multiple mountain ranges, including the Cascades, the Olympics, and of course, Mount Rainier National Park, and a ton of just outdoor activities. Plus, once you've been kind of cooped up in the winter here, it's nice to get out when it's beautiful. In fact, most residents that work from home or are entrepreneurs when it's really pretty outside, in the summer, they're just gonna cut tail. Yeah, they're gonna go out and they're gonna play and they're gonna enjoy the scenery. So with all of the exercise, with the amazing seafood that we have, and just an overall culture of being active, you definitely could be moving into a healthier area, but I can damn near 
promise you, you're gonna be moving into a more active area. So if you're not a very active person, if you just like sitting in your house all day long, you're not one of those that really likes to get out and about, uh, this might be a little bit of an adjustment for you because yes, your friends are probably gonna ask you to go hiking. And yes, they're probably going to assume that you're also gonna to wanna to go with them. One question I get asked a lot from people is about the restrictions for their furry friends. Washington is actually ranked as the most dog friendly state in the United States. And I tell you, I see it everywhere, not just in the country. You can be in the middle of downtown Seattle and you will see dogs riding the bus. You will see dogs outside of cafes. Heck, you will even see dogs at people's workplaces. Now in my neighborhood, dogs get, I think, a special, special treatment. You'll often see dogs in shoes, Patagonia vests. They've got decked out different drinking water bottles they can use while they're on the road for their walks. Overall, coming <laughs> from a place where, you know, dogs were just kind of pets, Washington will probably be a big shock to you in the way that they believe dogs should be treated. <laughs> Lastly, something I really didn't know is Washington is actually the second biggest producer of wines in the United States, just next to California. So every single mom on the planet can rejoice. Now this is pretty neat because not only do you have a lot of local wines, but it also makes for some incredible day trips in places like Sato Saint Michel in Woodenville have an amazing summer concert series that you can go out and attend sip wine right there from the winery and enjoy some incredible music right in the heart of Woodenville. With 792 wineries across the state, I highly suggest, like I said, checking out Woodenville, some of the wineries around the Columbia River Gorge, which is a beautiful area, and as well, one of my favorite weekend trips, Leavenworth. Well, all right, there you have it. There are some things that you might not know about moving to Washington if you're from out of the area. Some of those were super surprising to me. Which one was the most surprising to you? Leave a note down in the comments. And again, Chris, myself and our team, we're getting reach outs from people every day wanting to move out here to the greater Seattle area. Our information is in the description box below. And until next time, I cannot wait until you're out here so we can show you around. We have different mul- All right, maybe one- Ugh. Vitamin D, oh, oops. <laughs> you get the right side. <laughs> and you start to see daylight decrease, or, oh, fuck. We have a gas fired, oh, God. We have a gas powered fire, Oh, and sometimes feels, I just burn.